Hi, welcome to HowToStats.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to perform a repeated measures ANOVA in SPSS. Now, in this example, I'm using the most basic uh, design for a repeated measures ANOVA, and that's a one-way repeated measures ANOVA. So there's only one main effect here, and there are three levels uh, in this uh, main effect. And the main effect is basically time. So in a repeated measures design, each person is measured um, at least twice. And in this case, there are three uh, time measures, or three measures uh, taken at three points in time. And in this fictitious example, what I've uh, created are data uh, to correspond roughly to what we know about uh, intelligence testing and how people's intelligence scores uh, can increase over time just by giving them the same IQ test. And in this case, um, 100 people, I've got 100 people in this data set. And each person uh, is measured once at time once for, uh, for their, um, I, their um, cognitive ability score. And then they're measured at time two, and then again at measured uh, time three. So this is row one, and that's the first individual that had their three time scores here. Uh, so that's how you set up the data for repeated measures and over for a, a one-way design. And the hypothesis here is that the scores are going to increase over time due to practice effects. Now to do a one-way repeated measures ANOVA, it's somewhat similar to a one-way, uh, uh, an ordinary one-way between subjects ANOVA, but it's actually a little more complicated. So go into Analyze and repeat, uh, General Linear Model and then Repeated Measures. So you have to uh, name your factor and the, um, there's only one factor in this case, one main effect, one factor. Uh, and the default in SPSS is to call it factor 1, uh, but I'm going to call it um, a practice effect. You can use any name in, the, in this. This is really a label. It doesn't have any consequence to the actual analysis. Now, the number of levels does, and there are three levels in my within subjects factor here. So I'm going to write, uh, type in 3. Now I'm going to add this uh, factor to the um, window, to this box over here. And then I'm going to have to define this uh, factor. So another window opens up, and SPSS is asking for three levels, or three variables, uh, within this factor. And they're all here. So I have to choose each one. I could do it sequentially, or I could do it automatically. So I could put them in one at a time like that. Uh, whoops. You can put them in like that, but you can also save time by putting them in into groups like this. SPSS is smart enough just to put them sequentially in order like that. Now, I'm only going to do um, so most of the just the basics for uh, repeated measures I know of. Uh, I'm going to follow this up with progressively more complicated um, examples in the future. Uh, but what I want to select on here is options, and I want to click on descriptive statistics estimates of effect size and homogeneity tests. Those are, those are pretty much the basics that you definitely should be calculating in every analysis. Uh, the advantage in a one-way ANOVA repeated measures of including your um, uh, practice effect or your factor in the display means for is that you can actually get SPSS uh, to compare main effects. So once I do the ANOVA to test whether there's even one comparison that's different statistically, typically you want to follow that up with some uh, post hoc tests or some follow up specific comparisons. And uh, you can do that in SPSS by clicking this compare main effects. And that's going to compare each of the uh, com uh, time one versus time two, time one versus time three, and time two versus time three mean differences. And this is under the assumption that uh, I'm going to reject the one way ANOVA to begin with. And there are some options here, and I'm just going to click on the least significant difference for now, because I don't want to go too much into Bonferroni. I'm going to do another video about Bonferroni corrections, as well as um, Holmes' sequential Bonferroni correction method, which is a little more powerful. So I'll click on Continue. Uh, I, I do want to plot the means. In fact, it's often probably what you should look at first is a plot of the means. Not so much in a one-way ANOVA. Usually you can kind of gather what's going on, but certainly in anything more complicated than a one-way, you'll want to plot the means, and, and I would argue that you should probably take a look at them immediately. 
Uh, I'm not going to ask for anything more. I, uh, these post-talk tests, um, uh, you can ask for more uh, more comparisons here, but not in a one-to-one 